Greetings and welcome to you. This is going to be a reading for you if you are the year of the horse. They're hidden feelings towards you. How have you been feeling, horses? Horses, I believe, are 1966, 1978, 1990, 2002, and 2014. How have horses been feeling since we checked in last time? I usually do Chinese astrology readings about twice a year. I feel like twice a year is a good amount. Okay. <laughs> so the horses have been focused on their blossoming abundance. Blossoming abundance, indeed. That is what has been on your mind because, because, because you have rendered people as unreliable. They just disappoint you and even when they try to help you, you don't like the way they do it. You feel like they do it in a shoddy way. And you would rather just take matters under your own hands. So you have. And you have started something brand new. And it's so funny because this brand new thing, endeavor, hobby, scheme, whatever it is that year of the horse people are up to, you don't want anyone's help. The only thing that you want helping you is the sunshine. And sometimes people are catch you when you're busy and offer to help and you get upset and you get grumpy and you're like no don't even look this way there's something that you're working on that is super super secret however we do have a no-no we have an attachment. So, these two are pretty positive. They're pretty positive cards having to do with independence and new beginnings. But this here, be careful. Be careful that you don't put this before God. Because every time people start to succeed, every time people start getting their way, in a certain matter they forget about God and then they put everything before God and then they put whatever that is up on a pedestal and then they wonder why it comes tumbling down do not put whatever this is that you have here is beautiful but don't put it before God because then it'll become a negative, a toxic attachment, and you are already showing signs of that. God is source, is the first thing that should be on your mind when you wake up. When we wake up, what are we grateful for? We are alive. <laughs> you hear the sirens you know there's a lot of people that are not making it they're not making it we wake up and we should 
have our mind on source. As soon as we wake up and we get grounded and we humble down, don't let, I want to say fame and wealth and abundance and success, there might be something that you might be selling that is making you a lot of wealth and don't let that wealth run away with your soul. Because it's going to be quite the temptation to put that first. And a lot of times, if not every single time, when people are in their 20s, early 20s, and even teenage years, they will put that person first. And they will put that person before God because they have mommy issues, daddy issues, and they will put that first, second, third person they fall in love with before everything, before God. And what happens? What happens? What happens when you do that? God comes, source comes, and takes that person, no, rips that person away from you. And you cry and you scream and you threaten to kill yourself because that person that you wanted has been ripped away. And why did God do that? Why did God rip that person away from you? Because you put that person before them. When you put nothing before God, God doesn't take nothing away from you. When you put everything before God, God takes everything away from you. Trust and believe. Okay, horses, who on earth are you dealing with? Multiple energies can come up. Sometimes it's somebody who wants to be with you. Sometimes it's somebody that you want to be with. Sometimes it's X energy. Sometimes it's people who just felt rejected by you. If somebody who is dealing with the year of the horse, people want to say something, I can't speak, would want to say something, what would they say? I don't react when people mention you. I want to be more than friends. I replay our conversations over and over. Oh, this person has feelings for you. How could they not? How could they not? When you really want to be with someone, you ask God for permission. You ask Source for permission. You get grounded and you get humble. And you have an intimate, inter, intimate conversation with Source. That's how you keep someone. That's how you keep someone that you truly want to be with. Because God respects that. And that doesn't mean that God's going to say yes. It does not mean that God's going to say yes. But God respects that and will take that person into consideration. And sometimes will even give the wrong person chances. Where they will look at someone and say, okay, well... That person's not meant to be with you, but I'm going to give them a chance just because they prayed about it, just because their heart's on it, just because maybe there's a lesson that needs to be learned through that person that will ultimately make the person stronger. So sometimes you might get an approval, but that approval is just temporary. So it's very important to ask 
for God's approval when getting into a relationship with someone because there are things that you don't know about the future. You don't know if that person is going to destroy your life. You don't know if that person is going to take your life away. It's so important for people to check in with Source on whether or not certain unions should be together. However, that is just a general, let's see more about this person. Let's use our lover's oracle cards. Let's pull four, four. I feel like you're not in a commitment with them, but I feel like they're in love with you. Like this person that you're dealing with is in love with you they watched you how you live your life <laughs> they watch your routine and they see you as wifey hubby material is what I want to say These are just general readings. They're just collective readings. So if it doesn't resonate with you, maybe it will next time. I just read the loudest storyline. And if it's not your story today, maybe it will be your story tomorrow. This person that you have in mind, you have them geeking for you. <laughs> Like this person, like you have them a geeking for you. Okay, so what happened in the past? You may not always understand why certain things happen. However, there's always a higher purpose to the events in your life. Through turmoil, a blessing will soon be revealed. Okay, so it was a blessing in disguise. Whatever negative thing happened in the past revealed a blessing in disguise. Some of you know about it, others of you don't. We have giving thanks. Oh, you know what I feel with this one? I hadn't looked at the front part. Um, I feel like you dodged a bullet with someone from the past. Like someone from the past you were going to get into a commitment with and that person was a huge red flag on so many levels so in the past you dodged a bill a bullet a bullet <laughs> okay in the present moment be grateful be grateful that you dodged that bullet that you didn't end up with that other person give thanks for the blessings of love soon to come your way with the right person Know that you deserve to be and have all that your heart truly desires. Okay, so you're not together. You're not together. And then we have in the future. Uh-oh. This is so similar. Look how similar they are. In, this, in the future, imagine all the unwanted thoughts dissolving into light. Creating room for new opportunities and possibilities for your life. And then the culmination, wow, look at that beautiful color, transformation. Your relationship with one another is about to deepen. Love conquers and transforms all things, okay? So what you end up with in the name of love is going to be more than what you asked for. That is what I get for you. So let's do a Taoist card for you. Making a decision. Don't be afraid to make a choice in something where you feel that you're in a seemingly choiceless situation. 
So even if you feel like you don't have a choice, you can still make a choice in that specific situation. Take the first step and great opportunities will emerge for you and those involved. Trust that every road is a route to your destiny and believe in yourself. And of course, we have this one here, my favorite card of the deck. It means that everything that you are doing is correct. Everything that you are doing from the last time that we spoke, you are aligned with the will of the heavens, the way of the earth, and the harmony of the people. Ride the tailwinds and welcome the generosity and abundance around you. Whatever you are doing is advantageous. So like we talked about in the beginning, the only negative thing that I see for you is not putting anything before what is more important. Okay? organize your life because you are so nervous over this new person that you've made a mess you've made a mess and you need to organize this mess for this new person to come into your life and this person is so much better than the last and it was by some miracle that you didn't end up with that last person because that last person would have destroyed your life. That's what I get for a lot of you. We have seeking no further. Your aha moment is at hand. You have the key. You have the key. And then we have facing and embracing the person in the mirror. So there's nothing wrong with you. There's absolutely no reason why you should be looking in the mirror and comparing yourself to absolutely nobody. And last but not least, let's do a color card for you. What color does the year of divorce people need to incorporate more? And we have experiencing peace and calm, the color of aqua. There's no reason for you to worry that you're doing anything wrong is what I want to say to you. And just be careful with attachments. You know, research in your own meditation. You don't always have to Google everything. You can just meditate. What is a negative attachment? What is considered a negative attachment? Just meditate on it. And other than that, that is all the messages I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Bye.